Hi everyone, it's Joanne here again from Apple Tree Studio with another tutorial for you. So this tutorial is actually a warm up for my patrons, but I thought I'd share it with you guys. And we are painting wonderful, colourful, textured hummingbirds. And this tutorial is all about the fun factor. So I provided a warm up as well for my patrons. I'm going to share that with you guys. And I think sometimes it's nice to have a little warm up, isn't it? Just to kind of get you in the zone before you start painting the finished painting. And we're going to be using one colour and then I'm going to move you on to two colours. And really, it's just a lovely thing to have a play with because I know that I'm the same. I just get stuck for inspiration. What can I paint? And something like this, which is nice and simple, is going to get you in the zone. Now, of course, if you want to take your art further, you can hop onto my Patreon channel, of course, and there's over 120 tutorials on there to choose from now, all watercolour. So there's a lot going on. You can find all that information on my website, of course, which is artbyboon.co.uk. Now, if you're enjoying these free tutorials, then please, please, please do subscribe and share. And that would be wonderful. Give me a little thumbs up as well. Always welcome. So I'm going to stop waffling on. <laughs> Are you ready to have just a little bit of fun with me and paint some hummingbirds? Go grab your brushes and let's paint. Hi and welcome. And this tutorial sees us painting not one little warm up, but two. And it's all about value and colour harmony, allowing washes to mix together on the paper rather than the palette and creating shape and form with shadows. So before we do that, I'll just quickly go through the materials I'm going to be using today. I'm on a block today and it is the St. Cuthbert's Mill at Waterford, at Milford, sorry, and it's a... Let me just check there, I'm just checking it is a 300 gram paper. And I love these little blocks because they come like that. So you can have this little section here where you can put your knife or your fingernail down and just peel away that sheet of paper. And there's absolutely no buckling, so no stretching. It works perfectly for me. Okay, so that's the paper. Big jug of clean water. Always got my kitchen roll at my side. Always got a spray bottle. I've got a size 8 brush and two colours. I'm using a red and a blue, basically. So I'm going to be using the blue, which is the Indantrothrone blue, to do the monochromatic version. And then we're going to introduce another colour uh, to that blue. So we could introduce a yellow and make greens. Uh, but I think I'm going to introduce a red and make the purple. So that's the way I'm thinking with that one. And these are, uh, just a little plays really, the, these are, this is the proposed Patreon tutorial. And uh, as you can see, it's quite <laughs> a little bit more advanced, but the warm up really helps you to get to grips with this one. And yeah, it's been, it's a lovely project and I'm really looking forward to sharing that with my patrons. And I've got another one here I did on a scrap of paper. So that's why it's got a lot of splashes on that. And it's the same approach, but slightly different. Uh, so once you've got this approach, this, this one here, or even this one, then you'll know how to do the other one. Does that sound confusing? It really doesn't when I go through it in the tutorial. So I'm going to move those to one side now, out of the way. And let's concentrate on a little hummingbird with one colour. So here we go. Let's just take a bit of the paint onto my palette. Make sure the top's on. <laughs> just move it to one side. So we're going to build the value up. So. You can go directly into this shape with your wet brush and your paint, or you could wet the area first. So let's wet the area first. So that doesn't mean that's the right approach. It's just another approach. I'd like to leave a little highlight through those wings. So I'll try not to paint that little section there just to give it a little highlight. And you know what? If I don't manage it, it's not the end of the world. Let's bring that wash down. Bit of dirt on my brush there, look. It's not very good, is it? <laughs> okay, and around the head. Down that beak shape, around the eye. And there we go. So you can see I've not necessarily kept within the lines and you'll see why in a moment. So let's just put in a lovely wash of the blue. Just being brave pushing that brush into those segments of wet paper. That's why I love watercolour. Just that explosion of colour onto the paper. Let's pop in a few shapes like that as well, just to 
show off the wing shape. Take that down. We'll have another one here, so I'll try and leave that little white if I can. I can add water. I can make linear marks like this just to pick that shape out again. Let's put some more darks into the eye or around the eye, should I say. I've not put the eye in yet. I'm going to leave that till last. Following that lovely bead of paint as it travels down the paper there, look. Okay, so I can see that I've got lots of wet here. So I can take a thirsty brush. I can squeeze the moisture out of my brush and just lift some of that away. So I've got a bit more control. But now I'm going to move the paint around a bit as well. And I'm using this part of my brush, the heel of the brush here. And I'm going to push out shapes like that. I'll just push them out. Oh, just giving it a bit of movement, isn't it? Giving it that impression that that bird is flying. You could even tap in some little bows as well. I can soften them away. If I get too carried away, I can always lift a little bit out with the tissue. Should I need to? But there we go. I think it's time to stop there. So, of course, I have to let that one dry, don't I? So, while that's drying, shall we do another one? Let's introduce another colour. So, here we've just put a flat wash and we will build up the values on that later. So, let's come back into this one and let's take our Indantrothrone Blue and add a red. This is the Rose Madder Lake. Any red is fine. Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do this time. We'll not wet it. I'll make two little puddles of paint. There's the red. A bit more water to that as well. And there's the blue. I'll just push that forward a little bit. There you go. So we've got two puddles of paint. Now, when we wet the paper first, what we do is we dilute the wash, don't we? So it's not as strong. And in fact, I'm just going to do something while I'm talking to you. I'm going to tap my brush into that wet wash and have a few little back runs. So this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my colour There we go, just putting that red in. I'm going to stop and have a drink because my throat is dry. <laughs> there we go, sorry. It feels like winter in the UK today. We're all getting coughs and snivels. <coughs> Excuse me, hopefully that'll be the last of that. So putting in blues now. <laughs> if I sneeze, <laughs> you'll have to excuse me. It's always the same, isn't it? Just when I switch the camera on, I either want to sneeze or cough. So I'm definitely coming down with what they call in the UK or in other places, man flu. But I shall persevere. <laughs> Let's put some nice red right round the eye there, look. Let's leave a little circle. Just going to drop some more stronger reds into that. I can come in with some blue and drop some blue into those reds as well. So we're getting this lovely combination, aren't we, of the red and the blue. Let's bring that beak down like that. Following that line, that pencil line, using my brush to make nice kind of drawing marks as well, you know, painting or drawing with your brush. Let's drop some more red into that lovely tail. And I think I'm just going to do a little bit of splattering on this one. I 
again, heel of that brush, I'm just going to push out some shapes, pushing out those shapes, being brave. <laughs> there we go. Maybe a few splatters as well, why not? But I definitely now have to let this one completely dry. So a couple of flicks of the brush. And there we go. <laughs> right, I'm going to go and get some cough medicine and I will see you when this is completely dry. So I'm back and they're all dry and you'll be pleased to know I've had some cough medicine. <laughs> so hopefully I won't be coughing on camera. Okay, let's start with this one first and let's see how we can bring this to life with just value, the importance of value. So we've used one colour, we've got some nice linear marks going on and some nice splatters and now I just need to show you how to bring it to life. So now we're looking at darker values. So I left this area here, didn't I, this lovely line here. So I'm going to come back into that line. with a value like that. I'll clean my brush and I'm just going to pull it out and let it just blend in with the rest of that wing shape. I can use the wet paint to draw in a line as well. And I know I need to follow that line like so. Might come in a little bit more on that one. Let's do the same on the other side. So let's put a nice dark value against that uh, wing shape. Maybe now we can use some more linear marks just to pull out the fan of the wing. I'll clean my brush, I can add a bit of water, I can still use the heel of my brush to push value out. I've got a bit of a line there, so I'd like to lose it as well. I don't want a line. I'm going to do some splattering into that. So we already know we've got one wing sitting on top of another. Let's come in. Let's put the eye in. Let's do that. Let's, let's get the old eye in there. So I'm just going to put a little circle and leave a tiny little highlight there like that. So while that's wet, I'm going to come underneath that as well and down into the beak area. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to push out that value, softening it away. Let's bring that dark down a little bit and there we've got the head in. Let's come underneath here now, nice and strong with that colour, down into that tail area as well. Heel of my brush, pushing that value up into that section maybe some lovely linear marks as well just to just to suggest the flow of the of the uh, feathers we're not painting individual feathers we're just just suggesting them if water on there would be nice as well and obviously i could wait for this to dry and add a few more details if I'd like, but for now, I think that is a lovely example. I'm just gonna put a bit more dark here. A lovely example, she says, of the power of value. We've got those lovely darks now, really emphasizing the lights. I'm gonna come in and put just another smidge of dark right under that belly there. That's perfect, there we go. I can also, in fact, I'll turn my picture this way and let the, the wash run a little bit. But I can also drop in bits of water. I can still do that tapping thing with my brush. Pull out a few more shapes. But for now, I think we should let him dry. I'm going to let him dry completely and then come back and show you how we can approach a, a, a hummingbird with two colours. So let's let this dry and come back to that one. So we're nice and dry now and we can move on to this little fellow here. And do you know what? This, that's a great exercise in tonal value. But then when you start to introduce another colour, so you're working with two colours or three or even four, uh, 
Wet into wet washes like this are just the greatest place to start if you want to loosen up your painting. So allowing washes to, to blend on the paper rather than the palette is just the way to go. And being brave as well, allowing for these little splatters and things. So, you know, keep going, start with one, build up to two and then three and then four. Oh, <laughs> you'll be flying just like this hummingbird. Okay, so we've used the, it was the Rose Madder Lake, wasn't it? And the Indantrophone. So now I can put in similar values, can't I, to what I did here. So I can take either the red or the blue. Let's try it with the red first. So all I'm doing is putting a darker colour into that shape. Like that. I could clean my brush and I could pop in some blue as well. Clean my brush again. Pushing out, pulling that wash out with a wet brush. Just like that. There we go. Again, I can use that little puddle of paint there just to create that line. That lovely linear mark of the head. Let's do that again on the other wing. Let's come in and put this lovely dark value right against that lovely little light. Can drop in some of the blue and make it purple. I can use the heel of my brush to push out those lovely colours and again I'm allowing them to blend on the paper. Let's take a mixture of the two now and come in quite dark I think under the belly here and around the eye. I'd like some bright red there as well. There we go. Cleaning my brush and just pushing that wash into the folds of the paper. There we go. Oh, I didn't put the eye in, did I? I'll have to do that in a minute. I've got a bead of paint here, so I can use it, look. I can use it to create a linear mark as well. Take the blue this time. That's coming with quite a dark colour just there. We can add a bit of red. It doesn't matter <laughs> it's your picture. You can do whatever you like. I can use the heel of the brush and push down those shapes. Push them out. I'm going to be brave and put that eye in, even though I should have put it in when it was dry. <laughs> But uh, I'll just take that dark colour again. I'll mix a bit of red in with that. And be brave. Let's put it in while it's still wet. There we go. A few more little darks. And I think our lovely little hummingbird is finished. You know, we're not looking, I'm not looking to create masterpieces for you and I'm not expecting you to create masterpieces. It's all very well coming along and uh, showing you how to produce a full landscape uh, because unless you are advanced, tutorials like that can be very difficult to follow. But I guarantee that warm-ups like this will just have you flying. They really will because it's going to build your confidence as well. So monochromatic important, using two colours important, wet into wet important, being brave. <laughs> Let's be braver with this one, being brave. And you know, most of all, the most important thing is have some fun. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to check out my Patreon channel. There is over, oh, I'd say 76 watercolour tutorials there for you to enjoy. So thanks a lot. Take care and I'll see you next time.